Veterinarian Dr. Gordon Layton, geneticist Gus Cothran, and a dedicated group of volunteers combed the hills of eastern Kentucky in search of a particular horse that's rarely seen outside the mountains. The group took blood samples and videotaped the horses they found, especially their distinctive gait. They then took their information to create the first registry of the endangered mountain pleasure horse. Now, recognition as a breed has been a long time coming, but the history of these horses and the people who relied on them go back many generations. It started out with my grandfather, as far back as I remember. He had the old mountain horse that he packed mail through the mountains on back in the 40s. His bloodline was passed on to my father and then uh, to me, and I have passed them on to my daughter and my grandson. It's five generations that we've been involved with the same person. Every holler or little region up in these mountains would have a, a stallion, and they would name him after the family. You know, like the Cables would have the, the, the Cable Rex horse. Uh, uh, Mr. Marion Stamper, he, the Stampers would have their stallion. The one that he was most known for was Goble. R.T. Little, my favorite of all the old timer. He was a dear friend of mine, one of my best friends. He was in his 90s and he helped me get started with my stallion. He was known for sil little silver and then the gold finger. In this area, they was, you had to have them. There was no other means of transportation. It was just so important to, the, to keep in these families that made their gardens and raised their food with them. These old mountain folks would have died out without these horses in their lives. They had to plow all day. They pulled buggies. We could ride them to town or to Sunday school. It was calm enough for the women to ride and the, and the children. I'm told the way they used to measure uh, a good mountain pleasure horse was if it could do 95 miles in a day. And if you know anything about the terrain in eastern Kentucky, that's saying an awful lot. I can kind of look at one and tell if they're calm, then you can trust them. They're very loyal to you. They ain't nice one day and mean the next. They are easy to train to do tricks. Uh, they will lay down for you. They will bow. They will pray. They're very intelligent. They're just an intelligent animal. Their body build is really pretty, and their, their, their hair coat is always, it glistens and shines. They're, uh, they're just different. I can spot one pretty much. With these horses, they have what is a four-beat lateral gait. The legs move together, but the footfall is one and then the other. You hear four beats. You won't hear two. Of a pacing horse, there's just two beats. With these, it is four-beat lateral. It's a very smooth gait. They're the Cadillac of horses. There's just no doubt about it. They're, just, uh, it's, they're born with it. The day they get up from being born, they will gate right in the hallway to the barn. And they never use any chains or weighted shoes, no devices. What you see is what they're born with. They're very versatile. You can barrel race them. Whatever you want one to do, they'll do it for you. They can do good and look pretty too. The mountain pleasure horse's distinctive easy riding gait allows the sure-footed horse to cover a lot of ground with minimum effort for both the horse and rider. The gait is an evenly spaced four feet lateral gait without exaggerated knee and hocks action. The gait is natural and has been bred into these horses over the generations for both comfort and reliability. This position and trainability... They're extremely special and I don't think I've ever seen a horse with a more agreeable temperament. They are the ultimate family horse. I had a mare, a real pretty black mare, a mountain pleasure mare, and I always wanted a good yaller horse, and I was with speaking uh, about uh, R.T. Little. He helped me, and uh, through another friend, bred this horse. His name is Goldfinger Star. He is a son of Goldfinger. He was born right here in Wolf County and has resided here the biggest part of his life. I've had him since he was a baby. He's been wonderful to train. 
uh, you can call him like a little dog. He would come to you always. He was the High Point Stallion uh, in 2003. He's won uh, numerous uh, championships for his uh, confirmation and for his gait and his disposition. He's won uh, awards from uh, several governors, state representatives. My daughter was the first rider to ever be on his back. I adore him. He's uh, always been wonderful. I could just stay here all day, I guess, and talk about him, how much we love him. I would like people to know about Ron's dream. Ron Cyrus was a dear friend of ours. He trail rode with us all the time. His son, Billy Ray, he was famous, and that kind of let people look toward the horses more when they saw Billy Ray riding. And uh, Ron was a very special friend to my grandson, and we bred my grandson's mare to a stallion that Ron and Billy Ray rode. His name was Comanche Chief. Before the foal was born, Ron got pretty sick with cancer, but he talked to my grandson about what the foal would look like. He said it would be born with four stockings and a blaze. It was born after Ron had passed away, so the dream came true at the feller. And uh, so the foal was named Ron's dream. He's here today. He's two now. When I began seeing some of these horses and meeting some of the people, I realized that this breed needed more attention. Being local, most people didn't think about it being endangered. They didn't realize that, yeah, most of them are right here, but they're not anywhere else. A little over 2,000 is all that's left in the world most of them being in this area. So well, we've scattered them out, but not, not where I would feel safe yet. I hope that some of the people in the future look and see what they are and don't let it die out. Don't let them go extinct. Uh, it nearly did at one time. When the vehicles come into the area, they forgot about the horses. I, I really hope and pray that God sees a way to keep them going. And people will get interested in helping us save them. If those Palominos look familiar to you, it's probably because they remind you of a certain TV horse. In fact, there's some evidence that Roy Rogers' trigger was a mountain pleasure horse. <laughs> 